Welcome to the Author's Corner. I'm Ethan Yang. In 2019, the world was one of the freest and most prosperous it's ever been. And then in 2020, that all changed. And as we know, the world transcended into darkness and despair. Lou Eastman, AIR's design technologist, wrote an article recently about this exact topic entitled On the Tyranny of Freedom. He joins us today. Lou, how are you doing? Great. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, so let's jump into the middle of your article where you actually bring up uh, Captain Ahab from <laughs> Moby Dick. And the title of your article is a very provocative one, um, On the Tyranny of Freedom. So can you explain a little bit more of what you meant uh, by that title? And also, why, why, are, why is Moby Dick invoked in this article? Sure. Um, so the phrase tyranny of freedom is something I came across in a, in a, a paper published um, by psychologist Barry Schwartz. Um, in it, he argues that uh, through the ideology of economics and rational choice theory, modern American society has created an excess of freedom with resulting increases in people's dissatisfaction with their lives, resulting in widespread depression. Uh, that the title of that paper was uh, Self-Determination, the Tyranny of Freedom. <laughs> so the, the idea uh, of self-reliance is argued against as isolating and negatively impacting the well-being of the individual and thereby impacting the good of the whole. <laughs> the connection to Moby Dick came as I discovered that Herman Melville had written it as a response to Ralph Waldo Emerson's essay, Self-Reliance. Uh, to Melville, Ahab represented the self-reliant man, uh, the individualist, and as one can gather from reading Moby Dick, uh, that archetype, archetype is cast in a very negative light. And in my article, I argue that the whale itself is the actual representation of freedom and individuality. Um, while Ahab actually represents the tyrannical collectivist attempting to reel in liberty and freedom. Um, this, this unbound liberty offends him so much that he goes mad with obsession and power while exposing many individuals under his command to danger and misfortune. Mm. So can you recount, just, you know, just take us back to 2019. I'm <laughs> sure we'd, we'd all love to return there, don't we? Um, but at the same time, you do bring up some very important points, um, such as how the world was free, but at the same time as it was free, it was also prosperous, you know, and the world obviously looks uh, very different than today. So can you sure. explain uh, just, just how free was it? What were the luxuries and the, uh, and the opportunities that people actually had, uh, had access to compared to today? Well, so my very first trips to Europe um, in my life were in 2018 and 2019. Uh, they were very eye-opening for me. Um, the ability to cross borders, trade, do business, generally enjoy an open and free society that really solidified my belief in open and free markets. Um, my last trip was to Estonia, which was really eye-opening. Um, I got my Estonian e-residency card, which essentially makes me a digital citizen of Estonia and by extension of the EU. So uh, this basically allows me to create and open a business in Estonia from anywhere I happen to be within minutes instead of having to fill out tons of paperwork, stand in line. There's really no, no uh, administrative bureaucracy there. And um, even though I don't have a physical residency in the country, I think that um, it creates an interest there and my, they're in my motivation to participate in commerce there increases. So, you know, I, I do plan on going back and, and uh, eventually making my way through uh, not only Estonia, but all, uh, from the Baltics all the way down to the Black Sea. And really, it's just, it was just amazing to see people crossing borders and, and, and making these connections. And COVID changed all that. Mm. And uh, just quickly before we move on, do you still have to pay taxes on those businesses in Estonia? Uh, yes, unfortunately, but Estonia has the lowest tax rate in the EU. Mm. All right. So we know Lou is picking the correct countries here. <laughs> um, so... In your article, you transition quickly to just how fast this free order can fall apart. And you talk about how um, there's, two, there's two things that you talk about in particular, which is an, outside, an outsider, like a foreign invader, and then altruism gone mad. These are two very uh, strong threats to liberty. And this is typically what drives society to really abandon um, these principles and these ideas that really made it so prosperous in the first place. And obviously the, the elephant in the room is obviously COVID-19. So can you explain how 
altruism and this idea of an outside invader really applied to COVID. Well, yeah. Um, so we all know people have short memories. You know, it's nothing new. History has shown us again and again that uh, people fall into these traps. So uh, my allusion to a foreign invader comes from James Madison in the records of the Federal Convention in, of 1787, where he's quoted as saying, the means of defense against foreign danger have been always the instruments of tyranny at home. So as we look at how governments handled the pandemic, uh, the more apparent it becomes that they used it as an opportunity to clamp down on liberty, especially among the poor and the disadvantaged. Um, the propaganda was blatant and contrived, and unfortunately, this kind of speaks volumes about how the general public has been programmed to receive instruction. It's kind of like there's almost a Pavlovian response to this appeal to authority. Hmm. And and you talk about altruism too. I know, um, yeah. you know, people just yelling at each other to wear masks, and people just. Uh, you know, just supporting lockdowns just because it sounds like a good idea. So can you just give us a, a brief few words on maybe a little bit on that topic, just how altruism drove people uh, to just be crazy in a way? So I've been studying the concept of pathological altruism. Um, so there's, there's a number of papers and quite a bit of research available that speaks about the, the addiction to the good of the whole. And um, so there's really nothing wrong with wanting to help those less fortunate. However, there's a very dark and menacing connection in altruism that leads people to do atrocious things eventually. Um, not at first, but, but it does happen. Um, it begins innocently enough. It's simple as uh, creating an us versus them mentality. Uh, it creates an in-group with ideals and goals that must be protected from the out-group that has contrary ideals and goals. And this is how it all starts. Uh, this is how genocides are eventually committed. Given enough time and conflict between groups, the conviction that one group or ideal is correct or better than the other leads to some pretty twisted and heinous results. Mm. So just let's just wrap up. Um, you have a quote in your article that I found particularly insightful, and I think perhaps we can end on this and you can explain to us uh, what you meant by it. But it goes, as the world begins to reopen, we should all uh, take careful stock of the freedoms and liberties we have retained and the ones we may have lost. Most importantly, however, we should shake off the hooks, lines, and sinkers of the world's tyrants and enforcement sycophants to begin again with a fresh perspective. So to leave us off, please explain. Sure. It's um, really eternal vigilance against arbitrary authority and dominion over society is required in order to preserve our individual liberty, our freedom to choose, and our ability to succeed in a competitive world. Uh, there are special interests who are obsessed with the idea that people have too much freedom. And they seem to be like Ahab or perhaps uh, Javert, Javert in Victor Hugo's uh, Les Miserables, focused on capturing a sovereign individual who has offended their sensibilities in some way uh, or their, uh, their, their morals or their sense of duty. Uh, they, they see those who do not fall in line or follow the letter of the law as rebellious and an affront to the machinery of normalcy. Um, they are out on the hunt for individuals who do not follow the rules. This is what we should be constantly on the lookout for and working to not only free ourselves from, but our families, friends, neighbors, and all within our circle of influence. So that's really what I meant by that. And thank you for that as well. Lou Eastman is AIER's design technologist, author of On the Tyranny of Freedom, which is available on AIR's website. Um, if you liked what you heard and you want to uh, follow us, you can see us, on, you can see more of our content on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, as well as our website at AIR.org. If you really liked what you heard and you want to support more contact, content and research like this, please consider donating, which all can be found at AIR.org. Thank you.